Hi everyone, it's Luke here from Weekend Tour Pros and I'm really excited because today I'm out on the golf course and I'm going to play 18 holes at Portsmouth Golf Course situated just north of the city of Portsmouth on Portsdown Hill. It's an 18 hole pay and play golf course part of the Glendale Group who own and operate a number of golf courses in the south coast and I'm going to show you what this golf course is all about today so come and join me as we play some holes and I'll tell you about it as we go. Okay guys, so I've just played the first hole and that leads me into the way that I'm gonna lay out these course vlogs for you. I don't intend on showing you every shot that I hit on every hole. I want there to be something for you guys to come and see when you come and play the courses for yourself. So what I'm gonna do is just tell you a little bit of an overview about the course, the practice facilities, etc. And then as I go around, I'm just gonna pick out some real kind of highlights of the course, let you see those. I'll show you a few of the holes as I play them. And I hope that'll give you a really good insight to what this place is all about. Now, without further ado then let's start over with an overview of the golf course so it's a par 69 for the gentlemen and it's a par 72 for the ladies it has three tee boxes here the front tees play at just under 5300 yards the middle tees play at 5800 yards and the back tees play at 6040 yards so a really good set of options depending on your level of ability etc now in terms of the practice facilities at the golf course, they've got these two practice nets that you can use to warm up. They're in absolutely fantastic condition and well maintained. And there's also a practice green which you can use to chip and putt on as well. There are, is an additional hole on the back, uh, back nine of the course, a spare hole on the back nine of the course that has got a practice bunker and can be used for kind of pitching practice, chipping and putting practice. However, from experience, unless you are kind of coming here a long time in advance, you're probably not going to use that because it does require you to walk a good sort of five or ten minutes away from the first hole and the other practice facilities. Now in terms of green fees, one of the reasons I'm playing this course, I want to show you it, is because the green fees are really, really reasonable. On the website, the cheapest that I could find at the moment was a twilight green fee of £13, and the dearest I could find was £28, and that's kind of peak weekend mornings. So absolutely brilliant value. The other thing I would say as well is there's a big range of kind of prices in there as well, so you're not always going to pay the £28 unless it is that sort of Saturday or Sunday morning. Now one thing I just want to finish before I go into kind of showing you some of the course is I'm not paid by Glendale or been asked by Glendale to do this review. These are my own views throughout. So anything I say is kind of my own opinion. But what I would say, and I do need to admit is this golf course is local to me and it was the first golf course that I was a member at when I started playing golf. So it's a really good course for me to start my reviews at because I know a lot about it, but it also means that it has got kind of a little soft spot in my heart. Right, without further ado, we're just walking onto the second tee and I need to show you these views over Portsmouth which make the green fee worth it alone. Look at that guys, some absolutely stunning views. I'm sure the camera isn't doing this justice, but for those of you that might be able to see it, we've got the Spinnaker Tower, which is right next to the kind of Portsmouth historic dockyard right there on the horizon. And you've got the island of Portsmouth kind of going all the way across there. And then just on this side here, you might see a little bit of land, which is also Hailing Island, really popular kind of tourist destination as well. So some absolutely unbelievable views off of this tea, guys. Absolutely beautiful. And then what we're going to do is going to play down the side of these views, the second hole down there, slight dog leg to the right. We hit a beauty guys, beautiful views, beautiful tee shot, what's not not to love? Unfortunately I didn't capitalise on that good tee shot on the last, I was enjoying the views too much, hit a second into the greenside bunker, ended up making a double bogey. Next hole I do want to show you though is this, it's the par 3 third, only 100 yards off the middle tees, one of my favourite holes locally because this is what par 3 should be occasionally for a handicapped golfer. Nice little short one, gap wedge in hand, big bunker guard in the green at the short. Uh, another bunker to the right, some mounds to protect the long shot. Just requires you to stand up and hit a good wedge shot, and hopefully you might get a chance to have a putt for a birdie. Push it a little bit left, hopefully you'll get over the bunker. Yep, yeah, it's just over the bunker, probably caught the down slope.
Now, one thing I would say, guys, is the greens here have just had their spring maintenance done a couple of weeks ago. So all of the kind of treatments that the green keepers do, so they're not in the best shape compared to what they will be in a couple of weeks. So just bear that in mind when you're looking at the course. It's not that the greens are usually like this. They are just post maintenance. You can still see some of the verti cutting in there, some of the sand, etc. And they probably will be a bit more bobbly than we're used to. to settle oh it's a really good lag putt pulled it a little bit to the right nice little two putt for par guys great little par three let's move on to the next one Okay guys, one of the features of this golf course is the slope. So the second hole where I was showing the views from is probably one of the highest points of the golf course. And then as we go around the rest of the front nine, we kind of go down the side of it. This hole, the fourth that we're on now, is a sloping hole where I'm looking back towards the tee at the moment, but it cambers all the way this way. If you hit a drive anywhere down the left-hand side in the summer, it's gone. They've had to build some mounds in to try and hold your ball there. But I've managed to hit a really good one with a five wood down the right-hand side. I actually pitched it probably 30 yards right of here, and you can see just how slopey it is. We've got a green set sort of flat into that slope 146 to the flag i do know from experience of playing this hole that it's okay to be short and let it roll down the hill what you don't want to be is left now as a left-handed golfer everything is pushing me that way so i'm going to do my absolute utmost to miss this to the right and hopefully give myself a chance to try and make a par we've definitely missed it to the right maybe too right i don't think it's going to kick in enough so desperate was I guys to miss that down the right, I've actually think I've pulled it too far right and maybe lost it into the tree, which is exactly the reason why you guys aren't watching every shot of this round, because you will not enjoy me hunting around trees looking for my ball. Okay guys, so after an eventful fourth hole, I managed to make a par on the par three fifth. And I've now got you onto the sixth hole. Now this for me is probably the signature hole of the golf course. Might not look like there's much of a golf hole behind me when I show you in a second, but that's what makes it so daunting. So if I just turn the camera around and show you now. Just in the middle there, you can just see we've got a massively downhill tee shot to a fairway and what actually happens with this hole is it dog legs round to the right there so you've got an option here with this tee shot is you can kind of try and cut over as much of these trees as you like maybe no further than here and that will kind of cut off some of the hole but the way it dogs legs round is kind of almost like a real curvature round to the right so the further you go to the right of those trees the longer the carry needs to be to get over them and the more chance you have got of blocking yourself out. So I think the play for me here is going to be to try and just hit something like a fairway wood down the middle, try and give myself a long shot into the, the green. But this is definitely one of the hardest holes on the course. Quite daunting, I would guess, for the amateur golfer. Hopefully I'm going to be able to hit a good one on camera and show you how you do play this one. Just before I hit this tee shot, guys, uh, if you're wondering why we're using a mat to tee off, the uh, grass tee is just situated just to the side of me here and it is part of the projects that the guys are doing at the moment to renovate this grass tee and get it back in play for the summer. Unfortunately where we live there was quite a lot of bad storms and that went on kind of quite late into sort of February, March. I think we had some really bad windy storms which meant that the guys unfortunately had to delay some of their winter projects to try and clear trees and debris off the golf course, set them a little bit behind. So unfortunately we have got to use a couple of mats as we go around the course where a couple of tees aren't ready to go back into use yet but we can forgive them for that because the rest of the course has been presented really really well um, I'm sure you guys won't mind either hey, a little five wood just start it over the trees cutting back into the middle of the fairway oh it's absolute position a guys really really happy that I finally hit a good one on camera today a little bit of a cutty one maybe not the purest strike but it's absolute position a started down the trees cut down the right and we'll try and play out the rest of this hole without making a mistake and show you how you play it Okay guys, so we've just reached my ball on the fairway of the sixth hole. I just wanted to go back and just show you the elevation change off that tee. Not sure how well the camera catches it from above, so I wanted to try and share it from below. So if I just turn back round, you'll see that the tee is just right up there in the distance. So it's a good 30 yards up, I think, from where I am at the moment. And what you can see now is this actually is, does open up 
a lot more than it looks like back up on that tee. One of those holes where you definitely benefit from playing it a couple of times. Hopefully down there in the distance you can see the flag. It's a really, really tough second shot because I've still got a long way to go here. Might not be able to reach the green, um, but we'll try and lay it up down there and give ourselves a chance for the up and down. I think this is stroke index one, definitely stroke index one for a reason, guys. Right guys, as I am filming a course vlog, I think the phrase YOLO kicks in here and I am going to try and give it a whack rather than laying up because hey, no one wants to see a layup. And if I do mess it up, it'll be quite funny for camera, right? But let's think positive. I'm going to try and munch a three wood down there, ball above my feet, see what I can do. See how close we can get this. Or you could absolutely flush it. Hit that really really well guys i'm very glad i caught that one on camera it's still not got there because i had about 230 to go into a bit of breeze today but we're a lot closer to the hole than we would have been with a layup let's see if we can get this up and down and make a par on stroke index one Okay guys, so ball is sat down in the rough here, big clump of rough behind it, not much green to work with unfortunately, just think it needs to be popped up in the air, I'm hoping I can do just that on this shot. I've hit that really well guys, tiny bit right but we've probably got about 10 to 12 foot for par absolutely take that on this hole stroke index one happy day let's see if we can make it a little bit longer than this one looked guys from where i was it's probably a good 15 feet putting through the shadows of the trees oh just didn't turn but what i will say guys is you offer me a bogey on that hole any time of the week, I would take it. If you ever come and play here and you make better than bogey on this hole, you put a comment for me down below and tell me because that is a tough hole to make par or better than unless you are very, very aggressive over the, uh, over the corner. The eighth hole that we're about to play now is a sweeping downhill dogleg to the right. Just requires kind of a long iron shot or a hybrid out to kind of the corner. Hopefully if the bounce is favorable, it will kind of shelter it down. So it'll hopefully turn it down and round to the right for you and leave a shot downhill into the green as well. So we'll play this hole. We'll show you the tee shot here. Massively pulled it right, guys. It needs to get lucky. It might. It might have got lucky and just snuck just round that first tree that I told you on the dog leg, just got under there. Far from my best strike, but it's in play. Let's see what we can capitalize on that. Okay guys, so I did get really, really lucky. I actually just went round that tree just, and what's happened is because of the camber of the fairway, it's come all the way down the fairway. So the tee box is over there. It's come all the way down and round, just nestled here. I've got about 66 yards to the flag. I've got a lob wedge in my hand because I'm on a massive down slope, which is obviously going to de-loft it. And I'm just going to try and see if I can just hit this in there, somehow find the green, give myself a chance at making another par. Hit that well. I feel that really well, guys. I've managed to get it pin high, hopefully about 12 feet. We've got a birdie putt, all good things. Let's go and see if we can make it. Okay, guys, so it's probably about eight feet left for the birdie. Be nice to get this one, sneak one back. Let's just make sure we get it to the hole. Boom. That's a birdie, baby. Where's those crowds? Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay guys, so reached the ninth tee now. I'm not gonna show you all of this hole, but I just wanted to hit the tee shot because I think it's a really cool little par five. Fairway's kind of going diagonally across you. So as a lefty, it actually suits my little slice slash cut into the uh, middle of the fairway. For a righty, a big sling and draw and you'll be massively down there. But let's see if we can just get one on the fairway. Fairway does cam massively from left to right as part of the slopes that we're on here. Let's just see what happens. That's a lovely little drive, guys. A little baby cut. Should be in the middle of the fairway when it kicks in. Yeah, that's really good, guys. Okay, guys, you've just seen me tee off on the ninth. Now I've just hit my second and my third. Unfortunately, just a little bit left of the green. But while I'm walking down the hole, I just wanted to sort of give a big shout out to the green keepers here. Now, I've come to this course for about seven years. Every time I come here, it gets better and better and better. The greenkeeping team here are a really small team. They do an absolutely sterling job. They do two things in particular really well. And I think they deserve a lot of praise for. One is they always present the course in a way that makes it fun to play. Prioritizing the enjoyment of kind of golfers of all different abilities and focusing on the things that are important. The greens, which obviously you can see they've just been doing the maintenance on and we obviously have to just bear with while they're doing that at the moment. The tee boxes, again, I've been able to talk to you about the fact they're renovating a few of them at the moment. And then the fairways. They are recently, or they are soon going to be applying a chemical onto the fairways that will get rid of all those daisies and bits and pieces and make them luscious and green like you're looking at. The other thing they do really, really well here, guys, is they communicate. Every single month, the greenkeeping team send a newsletter out to their members and anyone who's registered to book tea booking on their website, telling you everything that's going on, what they've been doing over the last month, how the winter projects have been going, what they're doing over the next few weeks. So you know what you're going to see when you turn up at the golf course. It's an absolute brilliant thing that they do. They take the time to do that, despite having such limited resources. And one thing I would say is, if you remember here, play here, or any other golf course, thank your greenkeeping staff. It's a thankless job. They do a brilliant job. So please give them the credit they deserve. The course is looking great today, given where we are in the time of the year real dry spell no rain they're making it still present really really lovely and really really playable so thank you to the green keeping team let's put out on nine and then we'll go back onto the back nine okay guys so we've just made it up towards the 10th green and i just wanted to pause to tell you about something really historical that's next to the golf course so you can't see it from here because there's some sort of trees and bushes in the way um, but actually what's behind here is the grounds of what's called fort purbrook now fort purbrook is one of six forts that were built on portsdown hill which is where this golf course is situated and they were commissioned in 1859 and fort purbrook which is the one that's behind us was actually finished in 19 uh, sorry 1870. now these six forts were built as a way of defending Portsmouth and the historic dockyard from inland attacks so as kind of uh, war and, and kind of artillery developed there was a fear that Portsmouth might not just be attacked from sea it might be attacked inland and the idea of these forts sat on the big hill looking over the city is they could help to defend Portsmouth as an inland kind of form of defence. Now my understanding is they were never actually used for that but they did serve a purpose and were used in both World War One and in World War Two. Now today the forts that are still in existence have different purposes the one behind us is used as kind of an arts and crafts kind of centre uh, and also a place where they do things like archery and rock climbing etc but you can still go and see some of the forts so if you ever come up here and have a round of golf do advise you to kind of drive along ports down here have a look at the forts maybe stop in and get a little tour of one of them because they are a really important part of our history another really cool thing that Portsmouth's got on its list right I'm going to finish out on the 10th now about 30 40 yards off the green and see if we can get up and down and make that par So unfortunately I didn't get up and down on 10 there guys, made a bogey and then made it a little bit worse by doubling the next hole which is a par 3. Didn't show you that hole but it's the longest par 3 on the course, 175, 179 I think it was playing today to a back pin, long thin green built into the hill, bunkers either side, lots of trouble. Fortunately I hit a good tee shot just left of the green but it left me with a really downhill chip, grass in two, didn't hit it very well. Now I'm just walking up the 12th which is a par 5, I've just hit a tee shot, I've hit a 3 wood up here and I want to show you this hole because a lot like the second it's another hole with amazing views over Portsmouth. We're almost kind of running level on, with the second in terms of kind of the geography albeit we're on the other loop of 9. I just want to show you these views again. Again guys not sure how much you'll be able to see of this because I'm trying to look through a viewfinder of the camera but hailing island again on our left hand side and then coming across the island of Portsmouth and the build up kind of 
stuff that you can hopefully see in shot now in the middle of the shot flats and things are right in the city centre then right behind it in the distance you can see the Isle of Wight today you can even see a couple of the forts that are also in the middle of the sea they might not show very, up very well on camera but a couple of the forts and there's some big oil liners and stuff out there on the horizon as well what a lovely view what a lovely day again like I said on the second there's not many golf courses you can pay 20 quid and get views like this as you're playing it absolutely breathtaking just to the other side of the 12th guys so I showed you over to the left hand side over Portsmouth just over to the right now through the trees you can see the settlements of Purbrook and Waterlooville over there and then right in the distance the South Downs again absolute miles and miles of views today absolute beautiful beautiful day for it and just another part of how great this golf course is Okay guys, so we've made it onto the 13th tee. There's another hole I want to show you. The green is down there on the left. We've got a dog leg round from the right to the left. And there's a copse of trees in the middle, which hopefully the camera's picking up. You've got two options. If you're a longer hitter, you can go over those trees. But if you do end up in them, it's, it's death. Or you can try and go right and hopefully the camera, the fairway will take you down a little bit and get a little bit closer to the hole. YouTube, I should try and go over the trees, but it is into wind today, so I'll see what I can do. Unfortunately, I've hit it dead straight at the corner. It might even be too long on that line. That's fine. Okay guys, so we found the middle of the fairway. It didn't manage to cut it over that corner. But what we're left with now is a really tricky second shot because everything is sloping downhill away from us. Again, I don't think the camera is going to do justice of just how steep this downslope is that I'm on. I'm going to deal off the club. So although I'm about 165, I'm going to try and hit a seven. Anything that flails left is dead. So not that right's any good either, but it just requires a really good golf shot. Oh, it's got to go on that line, but it's beautiful. Okay, guys, so I've come up here just sort of 10 yards short of the green. I'm going to see if we can nudge it over here, get up and down, walk off with a par. Oh, I've hit that really well, guys, just unfortunately by not throwing it all the way and trying to chuck it up here, I did take a risk that it would come out. Maybe not come out just as far, but what have we got? Eight, ten feet for par. It's a brilliant risk-reward hole, guys, like that opportunity to cut the corner, take the trees on, does give you probably about 50 yards less in for your second shot. You're normally on a flatter lie. You've got the whole of the green going with you. But if you take that safe play that I took today, and not deliberately, but if you take the safe play and go to the corner, a lot longer second shot, a lot steeper hill, and you are kind of having the green sort of side onto you. So great little design hole, guys. One of the best on this back nine. I'd love to make a par on it. Just not hit it, come on. Oh, how frustrating, guys. Okay guys, so we're now on the 15th hole. I've just played the four, uh, 14th, which is a short par three. Made a nice little par there, the first one on the back nine. Now the 15th is a long straight par four. So the tee is dead behind me. The green is right up there just in the distance uh, on that little raised mound, dead straight. The one thing I love about this golf course, and I think I spoke about this earlier, about how kind of friendly it's set up. Longest par four on the golf course, widest fairway. Gives you the chance to get the driver out, really open your shoulders up, give it a whack. If you do miss it left and right, yes, there's trees, yes, you might be chipping out, but it's highly unlikely you're going to lose your golf ball. And I just love that about this golf course. It makes it super friendly for the handicapped golfer, the newer golfer, and even something that the, you know, the, the lower handicap or better player can enjoy as well, because they can really open their shoulders up on holes like this and get the advantage of being right down there. Now, I've been hitting the three wood okay today, so I'm going to try and give it a go and see if I can get up there. Uh, it's just cut too much guys, not straight enough. It might get halfway up the hill. Stay out of that bunker. Might have just got in the greenside bunker guys. Unfortunate, but you've got to give it a go, right? It's YouTube.
Unfortunately, guys, didn't manage to get up and down from that pot bunker short on the last hole. I did get it out in one, but left myself about 60 foot of putt and unfortunately didn't manage to make the two putts. So unfortunately made a double there. I want to show you this hole though. This is the 16th. It's the last par three on the course. It's about 167 yards from the middle tees that I'm playing. Now from where you are, I don't think you're going to be able to see the flag because the, the actual green slopes all the way away. So where I am, I can just see the flag at the back of the green. If the flag was at the front, you would see the top of the flag, but you wouldn't necessarily see the pin. Now a great little design feature of this hole is there's also a bunker protecting the front of the green. There is ones left and right that I can see. But there's also one short. It's about 138 carry. I can't see that from here now. It's another reason why having a GPS watch is a good thing um, because it does help you if you're visiting these courses for the first time. And by the way, if you do want to see a review that I've done of the Tag Heuer connected watch, I'll put a card up in the top right of the screen now and you can have a little look at that review that I've done as well. But I've got a little six iron, guys. It's into wind, downhill. I'm hoping the two things will counter each other out. We'll get it over that bunker and hopefully get it all the way back there to the pin. Caught that little heavy, guys. It's got to go. Get over that bunker. I can see it bouncing. I'm hoping that means it's over the bunker. Haven't seen it on the green yet, though. This is the great beauty of this hole, guys. There's an anxious wait now. Have I made the front edge and I can't see it, or am I in trouble? Let's go and walk down and have a little look. Okay guys, so we're just walking down to the green now and that bunker, it's actually two bunkers protecting the green short are now coming into view. Still can't see my ball, which is a little bit worrying. Hopefully we're going to see it just on the front edge in a second. I can just see it coming into view now guys, perfect. Phew, what a brilliant little golf hole guys. You think you've hit an okay shot, I obviously caught that a little bit heavy, wind into, started to panic. But I've got over there and you get that moment of joy and relief when you start to walk down the hill to see it. Okay guys, so I'm hoping the microphone is still picking this up because I am rough measurement about 23 paces away. So some of the region are about 70 feet, uh, a massive, massive putt because I'm at the front of the green. And the flag is literally back left where you guys are with the camera. What I would say is this green is looking like it's recovered really, really well from the maintenance guys and just proof of what these greens will be like as they start to go in towards the season. Again, still got a lot of recovery to do, but you can see it's come along really, really well. Right. I will absolutely bite your arm off for a two putt here. It's a really good line. I just can't convince myself to hit it that hard. It's not very often you have a 70 foot putt. Unfortunately, we've still got a good probably 12 feet to go. What have we got? One, two, three, four, nearly five paces, guys. Not good enough. Oh, maybe wouldn't have turned in, but nearly. It's a shame, guys. Three putt for a bogey. But a beautiful little par three, guys. Hopefully you can see back up there, up to the tee in the distance. There's a good 10 yard drop here, but a brilliant little par three and the final par three on the course. Okay, so the final hole I'm going to show you in a bit of detail today, guys, is the 17th, the penultimate hole. And what we've got is a par four that's largely straight down there. But what we've got is a fairway that comes from left to right. We've got a really big oak tree about 75 yards out from the green, which you'll see when we get down there, which blocks anything out that tries to be too uh, protective and stay close to the left-hand side. And there's also, where it's a bit of a blind tee shot down the hill, there's also a pond down there about 160, which is probably where you'd want to lay it up because it's the widest part of the fairway. So what that means is you have two choices. Be really negative, take like an eight iron, seven iron off the tee, lay up short of it, give yourself a longer shot in into a really narrow green, be a bit more aggressive, try and take it over the pond, hope that you can roll right of the oak tree and give yourself a shot into the second. I'm gonna try that option because again, it's YouTube and we all wanna see something fun even if it is me messing up and see what happens. So I'm going to go at the oak tree. Hopefully I'll land it there and it'll just kick to the right. And give me an angle for the shot in a second. I've hit that really well. It's going to hopefully get over the pond. Oh guys, I've absolutely hit that beautifully. 
just over the pond, a little bit right of the tree, but it's just, again, fed to the right. Hopefully you'll see when we get down there, we're in absolute position A, and hopefully we've got a chance to turn a really difficult penultimate hole into a hole that we might have a chance of making a par on. Happy days. Like I was saying guys, risk reward hole. I've tried to take it down the left hand side. I actually pulled it a little bit further right than where I was aiming. And uh, you can still see that I am really, really tight to this oak tree to get it to that green. So this is gonna be a really interesting second shot for me. 82 yards. Hopefully we can miss this tree. Ball above my feet, gripping down the club a little bit. Make sure you still commit to your shot. Oh, I think I've just put that too high, guys. I think it's gonna be short. It is absolutely a little bit too short, but gripping down the club, took a bit of yardage off it. I hit it really well, just a little bit short. We've now got a battle to try and get up and down. Again, brilliant little hole, guys. Hit a really nice little bump and run there guys to about three or four feet let's see if we can make the par beautiful guys lovely par on 17 happy days okay guys so i'm just walking down the 18th fairway now to my ball to hit my approach into the green just while I'm doing that, I thought I'd just give you my concluding thoughts on this golf course. Now, like I said right at the very beginning, this place does have a little sort of spot in my heart because it was the first golf course I was a member at. I think you'll see from today, it's got a lot to offer, a real, real lot to offer. First of all, the value for money, a you know, brilliant pay and play golf course, lots of green fees in that kind of low 20 pound price bracket. Definitely has something to offer kind of the new golfer, people that are new to the game, beginner golfers, as well as still offering a real good challenge to the kind of more experienced golfer. Hopefully along the way, I've showed you some of the real cool feature holes on the golf course. I've told you a little bit about the history as well. Some of the cool things that are in the surrounding area with those forts as well. Hopefully you've seen this is a great place to come and visit. Now on that note, I think this year, 2022, is the 50th anniversary of the golf course being open. I think it opened in 1972. And I believe I read somewhere on their sort of social media, they've got lots of kind of really cool things planned to try and commemorate the year. So a great year to come and visit, guys. Please do check them out. I'll put all the details for tea booking, the golf course, etc., in the description below so you can see it for yourself. Right, let's go and try and hit this approach into the green, finish with a par, and see what we ended up on today. Okay, guys, just tapped in for bogey on the end there, and I'll put the scorecard up and, as you, so you can see it on the screens. Not my best day out on the golf course, but a really, really good fun one nonetheless. And hopefully a really good chance for you to see Portsmouth Golf Course, showcase what it's all about and give you the appetite to come along, check it out, book a green fee and see what you think to this great little golf course in Portsmouth. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to give the thumbs up to the video, subscribe to the channel. It really, really does help me. And comment below if you've played this golf course. If you haven't played this golf course, if you're gonna check it out and add it onto your list now, anything like that is really, really helpful to me. And tell me what you wanna see in these course vlogs as well. It's the first one I've done of these. So we're really, really interested to see what you guys wanna see more of when I do the course vlogs. Do you wanna see more of the shot by shot or would you like this format? Thanks very much for watching. Cheers, goodbye.